welcome to a brand new episode of The Woolly Thistle. We are delighted to be here again. It doesn't seem like two weeks since we recorded last time, and uh, but it is, and so we're back. Uh, just quickly, thank you for all the wonderful comments. Did you read all those comments? That I did, last time? I did. Everybody's so friendly. I know. And I think everybody really, really enjoyed our last episode where Kelsey was doing her swatching and we cut the stick on this live and um i think people just feel like we're getting our groove together too yeah which is really good i feel that way too so it's nice i know, it's I nice know. To see. it is so thanks for your comments we love hearing from you so please do uh, leave a comment and when you do you're in the the running to win a prize uh we always give away a 25 dollar gift certificate to the shop and this episode we will do that too and i'm actually planning to sprinkle randomly a couple more winners throughout the podcast just this once so let's see if uh if you're a winner um we will start with the first one and this winner is sue yarborough so congratulations sue you want a gift certificate to the woolly thistle for 25 dollars and you had said another great show i enjoyed seeing you cut the stick i am also interested in the pegalol yarn and the knitting barber there's always so much temptation when I watch. I don't think you're all on there. And during this show, I make a list of all the things I want. Maybe I need to start a Christmas list for the hobby. Not a bad idea. And keep up the great work. Kelsey is always so interesting. Mm. So thank you for that lovely, lovely comment, Sue. You're the winner. Just send us an email to info at the woolly thistle. Put winner all in caps in the subject line so we can find you quickly and get your card out to you. And so there'll be one or two more prizes drawn uh, throughout this episode. So stay tuned. You might be a winner. We take the, um, the winners from the comments randomly. So you could be a winner. All right. How are you, Maggie? I didn't even stop to say who you are. This is Maggie, as you know. But if you're new here, Maggie is my co-host. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sorry. quietly sitting. I know. You should interrupt the more. Like, yes. <laughs> it is tempting here. <laughs> it is very tempting. Yeah, you've been shopping quite a lot lately. <laughs> I I have. <laughs> you want to tell people no what shame. you're buying? No shame. Um, no, I bought some vintage tinsel. Um, so I can get Christmas socks going. I yeah. have not started them yet. Uh huh. Um, and I couldn't resist the Armscott Manor, so I uh, took home the three skeins of the Black Walsh Mountain, and I think it will be hap. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, we do want to talk about haps and shawls. Um. Yeah. At some point, we are going to do a little bit, uh, a little bit more homework, um, because we want to bring you a really good episode about haps in particular. So that is good, Maggie. Maybe can you show <laughs> us how we're we going to do this? I don't know how we're going to do this. Um, so I... Maggie's dressed for festivities today. I, I am. I'm a little early in the I season. Think you, I think but... you have to sit and like kick your legs. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> I don't know that you want to be sitting right there. I'm wearing a dress. <laughs> well, so I'm wearing a dress, but. I do have my <laughs> socks on. It's a good stretch. Here, I can't do both. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold them up for you. <laughs> That's a little weird. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I put them on the chair. Nope, can't see it on the chair. So, just kick you in the face. <laughs> so, she is time. wearing her full length Christmas socks, which are this one here, candy cane. And I know you guys have seen this before. But don't they make wonderful <laughs> socks? They do. She's our little shop elf. I think your shoes are perfect as well. I love these shoes. Yeah, they're perfect. They're a little bit school marmy, but in the best way. But <laughs> yeah, but with those socks, I mean, yeah. just perfect. Well, we'll get, we'll put insert like a little. Yeah, we'll get a proper video, photo but... instead of her kicking me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Yeah, so. It's not personal. No, not at all. Uh, just a, a beautiful outfit. Lots of comments in the shop this morning from uh, the Packers. <laughs> they're walking around. They're like, you look lovely. <laughs> it's a little early in the season. <laughs> yes, it is. Bringing the season in nice and not early. Not even Halloween yet. No, it's not even <laughs> Halloween. But I have been talking to my kids about Christmas lists and things like that because, you know, all the news is filled with how difficult it's going to be to get our Christmas shopping. So I'm planning, yeah. I would love to have it done by the end of October. That's my goal. Uh, but I do have two kids and both their birthdays are happening in October and December, as well as Christmas. So I'm going to try and get all that done by the end of October. That's my goal. We have a lot of November birthdays. Do you? Um, yeah, our youngest, um, she's always around Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Always complicates things. Yeah. And then my husband and his sister, like everybody's in November. Huh. Yeah, I know. Holiday birthdays, it's just a chore. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's not really, but yes, it is kind of like when you're mom and you've got to get all that sort of organized, the default parent pretty much, you know, and yeah. uh, you got to get all that organized plus the regular festivities for that time of year. It's a lot, but it yeah. makes it fun. It all happens in the fourth quarter in our house. So that's, you know, I get the rest of the year off yeah. from that. Although my daughter has instituted half birthdays because... <laughs> You know, December. not allowed at my house. No, well, she thinks... You <laughs> if you're know. watching, get no ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her half birthday is on Flag Day. So she feels like that's a very important... That's funny. Flag Day is um, my son's birthday. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And what, what year is he in? He's a junior. Yeah, my daughter is a sophomore. So okay. I wonder if they know each other from school because they go to the same school. My daughter's hardly know. been at school because of COVID, but she's back there now. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's get back to the show. Um, yeah, so Maggie, what are you wearing? I know you wore this. Um, I've worn this before. It's my Belmont. I, I do wear it a lot. And since I have this dress on, it fits nicely with the dress and it goes with the socks. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just, and this is by Goodwin Johnson, mm -hmm. which yes. is a lovely design. Um, and I'm wearing the For, Mor For Morgan by Vedis John's daughter, who is an Icelandic designer. And this was a free pattern, sleeveless little vest, knitted in Let Lopi. And um, I love this. I wear this all through transitional periods of the season. It's just great because it doesn't have sleeves and you can feel warm without too hot. Um, however, I think this pattern is not available in English right now. Yeah. So last time she wore this, we got lots of emails in the shop at the shop. Um, and <clears throat> like she said, originally she was able to get it for free online. And I think you can, if we can find it in English, we'll put it, we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't. But for a while there, it was only available in Icelandic again, uh -huh. um, and not in English and I think some people had success in emailing okay. Lopi and getting the English copy. Oh, but, good. Yeah. Um, um, there is a couple of other um, yoked sweaters, and I will link to them in the show notes if we're able to get those in English as well. So look for that down below if if that's of interest to you. I like those purples. So one of these purples is actually discontinued as okay. well. I knitted this such a long time ago, maybe five or six years ago, and I think it's the darker purple. I can't remember. One of the purples anyway. But it's nice because it goes from black to dark purple, light purple, and uh, cream. So it's a nice little okay. gradient, which is not available now. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. So Let Lopi, while we're talking about it, um, Let Lopi is a fantastic yarn. It's um, from Iceland, and it's very sort of um, silky feeling. It's got, it's got the two... Um, double coated. Double coated. So you've got the long and you've got the short fluffy one. Um, so for some people this can feel prickly, but of course I am not sensitive to, to that at all. I like it. I am wearing a t-shirt or a shirt underneath as well, but I could wear this and do wear, not this, but other sweaters next, next to skin. Um, I but, could not. No, you're, you're a bit more sensitive. That, that said, I love, I like, I, well, have have. I have a couple Let Lopi sweaters and I love them, but I do usually wear something underneath. Okay. Yeah. And then, um... But I did want to say that uh, the factory where Lopi is made is having trouble keeping up with production because of COVID. Um, so we don't have all the colors. We haven't had a lot of the colors for quite a long time. But the colors we do have, we should have plenty of stock. So I think there is some wiggle room there for you to decide on colors uh, based on what we have. There's enough choice, but we are not able... The colors we don't have is because we're not able to get them right now. And as soon as we can, we will keep replenishing. And that's the same for Plato Lopi as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we're doing the best we can with that and they are doing the best they can as well. It's crazy how this just continues to have ramifications for everybody as we go yeah. through. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you have any FOs, Maggie? No. No. <laughs> do you have a whip? I do, I do. I'm still working on my sweater. Um, I showed Kareem. I about smarted the cat. It took me weeks. I put it so it's in a plastic bag and then in my bag. That's so, a nice big ziplock. Sorry zip for lock. crinkling, but it is a nice big ziplock. I think some yarn came in it. It did, and yeah. I, I it's good it. stuff. Um, so I've made good progress. Ooh, yes, you have. Um, Look at this. So. Oh, 
I, I love the texture on that. I know. And the smell. <laughs> I wasn't making, I didn't know, I, I couldn't tell. You know how sometimes for a while you're just like, am I making any progress? So I actually put in a progress keeper like on Friday night. Yeah. Um, after I'd been knitting a little bit. So I think I've got a good three inches done this. It's super pretty it's too. Where did you get this? Oh, I just made it. But this is amazing. This is looking yeah. so good. And I good. put it on waste yarn so that I could try it on because I was like, I don't, I don't know. And um, it fits? It does fit. Thank and it God. has like a little bit of room. Good. Um, And I figure, you know, by the time you add in the inch and a half button yeah. bands on each side. Yeah. Um, it's going to be plenty. It'll, I think it'll be good. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Thank God. Because I'm not ripping it out. No. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to knit this too now. <sighs> Making good progress. And I'm going to try to make sure that I don't, because I, you know, when I block it, I can always pull it this way. There's a lot of bounce. Yeah. So, so you I don't, don't want to, you want to knit enough. Exactly. Yeah. I got to keep knitting and knitting yeah. enough. I have plenty of yarn. That was another purchase I made recently. Okay. I was like, I don't know if I have enough of this. So I bought extra. And you were able to get the same dye lot? Yes, we Good. still had it, which is why I was like, I'm going to get to Yeah, it. I have lived that nightmare. It's not fun when you yeah. lose yarn chicken. And since my sister's knitting the same thing, I told her, I'm like, I'm buying you an extra ball just in case. Oh, nice. Because <clears throat> And then where is she? Is she um, right about the same stage so, as you? No, no, I'm ahead. Um, <laughs> because, Sisterly. because I have been, I'm never this monogamous in my knitting. This is literally the only thing I'm knitting. Mm -hmm. um, I say I'm monogamous, but I warped my loom this weekend. <laughs> That doesn't count. It's not knitting. Um, <laughs> so she she started knitting in Althea. Oh. So she has like I think she last time I talked to her she had one and three quarter sleeves done and then that she cast on Althea. Yeah. And got through the yoke and separated for the sleeves and was gonna go back to these sleeves. And then she's like, I don't know, now it's just so easy. I'm just like <laughs> Yeah, so. the Althea's gonna seem very quick and simple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's got to get back to this, though. Good she for will. you being monogamous. She will. So, and while we're talking about her, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> Tomorrow is her birthday. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, so I've made good progress. I'm just keeping going. I'm not cast. I'm not allowing myself to cast on anything else because and when do you, I want this done. When do you split for the sleeves? How much further? <laughs> Couple you know, inches? a couple inches at least. Mm -hmm. um, like, I actually almost think it's like maybe three inches. A finger length? Um, yeah, because I want it to be, I don't want to cut it short. Yeah. I don't want this to be where no. I regret having not knit it longer. Yep. Yep. It's so. beautiful. I love it. I yeah. really do love it. And it's just so unusual with that yeah. pearl bump. And the fabric feels color. just really nice. Yeah, you've, you've done um, well. It's, it's really, um, everybody is so warm and they're, they keep telling me I'm amazing. It's really, I, I, you are it is amazing. one stitch at a time and you just keep going and then you get a sweater. Yeah. I will say there was one night where I looked down and I'm like, I don't need the chart anymore. And then two rows later, I was like, I messed up. I need the chart. Um, rip, rip, rip. So I, so I actually pulled the needle out and ripped the stitches out. Yeah. Um, and, and they all stayed. They all just stayed there. Yeah. I, I didn't that. lose one. I no. ran the needle back through. It was. That's the beauty of Wooly Wool is they're not going anywhere. You can, you know, very forgiving. You yeah. can do that. I actually was trying on a sweater that I'm knitting and I pulled the needle out. Yeah. And I didn't even bother with waist yarn. I just put it over my head. Yeah. Got the quick, quick look and, um, and put the needle back in. I was cursing though, because I wished I'd got one of those knitting barber. I, yes, Quartz. I found the same thing when yeah. I was when I had to put it on waist yarn to try it on. And I cheated. I only put about half the stitches on waist yarn, mm -hmm. and then the needle was more than right. long enough. So I'm right. like, all right, fine. Yeah. But I was like, why didn't I get one? I know. So, I know they sold it as soon as we got they them. They did, and it was a, it wasn't a huge order. We have ordered many more because we obviously yes. realized oh, it. And that was part of why I didn't get one. I'm like, I know we're getting more. I'm gonna let other people shop. <laughs> You're so kind. I, I just didn't get myself. there. <laughs> I didn't get there fast enough. That's my. Whole reason so here's my whip i'm knitting yet another victory cardigan and here she is and i'm really enjoying knitting her um this is color 400 and it's knitted of course in vams from rama which is their i what is, i love this color you know i like it too and it's not often i go well i, I, I say, lie you said you got you chose red and i was like red yeah I mean, I do have a couple of pieces in red, but I like this sort of dark heathered red. And so I've already split the sleeves off and we're done. I've done the bust shaping here. You'll maybe be able to see a little bit of that there. I don't know. You can see sort of a, a seam running down. So we've got, hopefully I've done it on the front. Oh my <coughs> God, can you imagine if I'd done the bust shaping on the back? <laughs> I had a moment there. 
Um, so next is I just have to knit down and then I'll start doing waist shaping. And the reason I'm knitting yet another, this is number three, is that unfortunately, number two back here is finished and beautiful, but she's too big for me. She's too big because I went off gauge and I ended up knitting, um, I think, three and a half stitches per inch instead of four. And that little half inch, uh, that little half stitch uh, multiplied by however many inches resulted in too big. But she does fit um, the model here. We're going to release this November 15th and it'll be a kit. There'll be buttons and ribbon for your steak as well as all the yarn, the pattern. And I'm also working on a video tutorial mm -hmm. um, that will walk you through everything, you know, anything consequential in the pattern with the shaping. There'll be uh, video tutorials for that. And so um, we've got a lot happening. So we pushed it back to November 15th just so we can get it all done and all ready and tied up with a bow just for you. So we're excited about that. So yeah, she turned out a little bit big. Um, so here she is. She's so soft and lovely. I did block her. And these ribbons are genuine Norwegian ribbons from Norway. It took a little bit of doing to find them and then actually get them to reply to us. Not to mention the, um, the language barrier, but we did get there. And so I did this one. This one I have yet to do because I ran out of ribbon. I didn't take enough home. But also I wanted to show you. So this is my, this here is my steak turned back and I just whip stitched it down. And it looks really good just like that, I think. And then I just, uh, with little stitches, put the ribbon and sewed the ribbon on either end and it just sits on top of that channel. Yeah. So anyway, all of that will be explained in the videos and uh, she's just a little bit too big for me. So she will be a shop sample, I think, for a while to come. And I'm not sick of knitting this one. I think the change of color is nice. I've got gauge. I am checking my gauge and I'm getting gauge. So that and I did try this one on and it fits me just fine to here. Um, and I just finished the bust shaping, so I will try it on again. And then we'll do the waist shaping and just keep checking my gauge and we should be good. Gauge, it's, ama gauge it's amazing is... how much a half a stitch. Oh, yeah, because if you think... Because when you add it up over the full... Right, so if I'm 40 inches around, say, that's 20 extra stitches in that circumference. And that makes a world of difference. So right. gauge is important. It's important in some things, and I think the the wise knitter knows when it's important versus when it's not. So there's times when you can fudge and it doesn't matter. Like, you know, maybe you're just knitting a boxy something and you're not worried about shaping. Maybe that doesn't matter. Although 20 extra stitches I is a I think it lot. just matters more with sweaters. Like if something yeah. that you want to fit really well, mm -hmm. um, especially you're gonna invest all that time in I know. it. Whereas if you don't wanna worry about gauge, do a shawl. That's that is a really good point. Do a shawl, what especially else some do? of the cowl? bigger shawls. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter if your stitch count is off. You actually want that to be nice and big. Yeah, and actually, it's so weird. On the smaller circumference of the sleeve, I was a little bit tight on the gauge. So I wasn't checking that. I was very much like, oh yeah, my swatch got gauged. This is what I'm doing. Knitted it, and then tried it on. Oh, and it doesn't fit. But I think big. our gauge really can change, especially from a small circumference yeah. to a larger. You just relax more. Yep, exactly. Um, so you, you have to be aware of that, I think, and just periodically check your gauge. And if it's not going to work, then you have to be okay ripping back and be knitting it. But you know what? I think more of our um, audience out there is getting more comfortable with yeah. that idea. Yeah, God I've seen, I've seen them it. talking about that more and more. Yeah. Even in our Facebook group, we've had conversations about that, about better to just rip it out and get it right first time. It is. And you just get to keep knitting. Yeah, you just, that's how I look at it. It's all knitting. And, you know, um, you know, if I've been knitting somewhere socially too and I make a whole bunch of mistakes, I don't care. I just keep knitting. When I get home, I'll rip it out. I just <laughs> knit it again. I'm that bad. But um, I do re-knit. Obviously, we all know that I knit, re-knit things all the time. But I think it does... 
it does it, well you end up with something that fits you that you want to wear that's why you're taking the time to knit that length and not rushing through the body yeah um so yeah i will say that cross i will not re rip that out i'll make it work <laughs> <laughs> um and what i probably will do is really just add length to the body and then i can hopefully widen it oh yeah little. but um, so you know that you can do that though and so you're yeah, thinking and it does ahead have give and yeah and you're you know you're not just knitting it the exact size they say to knit it you're going to add a little bit so that if you need to right but you know it's a cardigan too so i don't think it's going to be too small yeah and i don't usually wear my cardigans yeah buttoned. closed yeah um so it should be fine i have found I said, that you can see even this one this one i found like it when i first block it it's really nice and mm -hmm. open and then I haven't washed it in a while. <laughs> yeah, well, because you don't have to, um, exactly. Yeah, like it's never next to skin, and right. um, I should wash it. So yeah, you know, just in case. You can even just spray like bottle stuff. the front and pin it out if you wanted to open it up yeah. a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Blocking. I need to do. I do need to before before the weather changes too much. Um, just have a big wash of everything and put it out to dry. Yeah. Before it goes away in its chest. Where do you keep your stuff? Over the summer, I, I have a chest that's sort of, it's not a cedar line, but I've got cedar bricks and bits and bobs in there. Do you have a special? I don't. Um, I have a, just, they're just in my closet, like up on the top shelf. They're yeah. folded, like mm -hmm. they all get folded. And mm -hmm. I think I washed them at the end of the season mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. um, just so that. Yeah, that's, that's the right thing to do. I didn't quite get there. Yeah, no, especially, I, I think that I'd seen somewhere that moths actually like your skin and stuff yeah, so it's gross. gross um <clears throat> and we have not ever had a yeah moth issue. um so but i did i went ahead and washed them the ones that had gotten frequently worn washed them yeah and, um they they're just all folded up on yeah the top no i think that's good you put little lavender sashes or anything oh, sure. yeah a little sure. lavender or um cedar bricks i found some on amazon i want to say yeah um which is good and yeah i just keep them all in, in a big chest in my bedroom and it's it, when i open that up it's always oh yeah I and love then the, that. my socks are i used the selection box i bought last year i used the oh. box and they're all in all my socks are in there yeah they look nice she said selection box <laughs> oh, i'm well, still working through the yarn i bought there too the plan was to knit through the year I failed at that plan, but, you know. <laughs> but you're happy. But I really like them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there might be another selection box Maybe. coming down the road, but we'll not talk about that just yet. Not We're working yet. very hard. Okay, so no FOs for either of us this time. No. So let's see what's next then. I will say though about your, your pink um or yeah, mauve victory cardigan. Yeah, like, even though it's a little big, I bet you it's still cozy. Oh yeah, it's super cozy. Um, but I like would, I would probably still wear it, even though it's it's that's not the true. fit you wanted. That's true. But I would probably it's, still. It's a gorgeous um, fabric. It's just so I, soft and I'm really surprised silky. at how much off the needles it's just drapey and cozy. If it ever goes well, missing, just look at my then office. yeah, you'll be all cuddled <laughs> up in it. That could, but the drape could be more because of the gauge. <laughs> That I knitted it at, you know, like three and a half stitches and an inch. Maybe. That, that's big. Um, yeah, you're right, yeah. though. I mean, I could just wear this for me, um, and that would be fine. But I want one that is perfect. Right. And so far, you know, the black one I had gauge. I'm not sure where that is. But, you know, <laughs> I forgot to add the stitches here. I am going to fix that, though, so that I can wear it. And um, then this one I knit at the wrong gauge. And so, you know, three is a charm, hopefully. I'm making myself the butt of everyone's joke because I can't do anything just once. I don't know. You sh we, you mo you're modeling persistence. I am. I am go. nothing if not a plodder. I will plod through till I get there always yeah. about everything. It's kind of annoying. I've been thinking more and more with this sweater how um, even though it looks really complicated, it's really, it's all just one stitch at a time. I know. You just keep going. And it's next true. Thing you know, you're like, <gasps> It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's true. And I think all of us can do that. All of us can knit one stitch at a time. Like, right? I, I really thought that this was going to be much harder. Um, I didn't give myself enough credit for the skills I already yeah. had. And I think many of us yes. do that. I, yes. It's not just me. Like, if you've knit color work mittens, yeah. there's nothing or I hat. haven't done here. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as well, doing the videos for that, um, for that um, victory cardigan, 
you know, it's very similar to the vanilla in the raglan shaping, so I would cross over for that. So, you know, if you've knit a vanilla sweater, you're going to be able to knit this too without any problem. And I think, though, that can be said for all, all knitting. Like, you know, everything you knit will help you in your next project. And I think that's really important. Like, even this morning uh, on my way to work, I stopped in at the, the little deli store and she's like, oh, did you knit that? And I was like, yeah. And I'm thinking... You know, this is such a simple color work thing, but she thought it was absolutely amazing, <laughs> which was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the sweater cowl that just finished up. Yeah. Wasn't that great? It was a lot of fun. Um, I, I think we we have over 104 finished um, amazing. sweaters. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of people who were really close, and I don't think that they posted in the FO thread. Um, they were really close. So we have more than 100 finished sweaters by amazing. now. Amazing. Um, yeah. And yeah. everybody was just really helpful, really. Our, our cows are always great. They are. Um, they're always supportive. Filled with lovely, lovely people. <clears throat> yeah. And who help other knitters with problems. Yeah. Yeah. A couple people um, knit, ripped out, re-knit. <laughs> <laughs> My people! Yeah. Yeah. And I think are much happier with their yeah. finished sweaters. So yeah. It's, it's good. That's fantastic. Um, so we had prizes. Those will have been announced. Talking of prizes, <clears throat> let's announce another prize right here and now. So picked randomly, we have Gail Ann van der Voet. You are a winner, Gail, and your comment was, so many beautiful yarns to try in so little time. Need to knit faster. We hear that a lot. My favorite part of the podcast and some of the others is that you are real knitters. Ha! <laughs> you share your mistakes, challenges, etc., and how you've overcome them. It definitely helps us feel more confident as we learn to be better fiber artists. Well then, it is my pleasure. If it helps you guys out there for me to air all my dirty laundry and my knitting, then I will keep doing that. I think it is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I mean, why do we expect to be able to just do something once and be really good at it, too? I mean, yeah, nothing's like that in life. For I'm actually, I'm actually my, my youngest is 11, almost 12. And um, she's been drawing a lot lately. Um and she often gets really frustrated because she expects to be able to do it mm -hmm. just right, make yeah. it look amazing yeah. the first time. And I'm like, you know how many times I've, yeah, like, yeah, you know, done exactly. something. Like, you've just got to give yourself the time mm -hmm. and the space to just try. Yeah. Just try and make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Gail, you win a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle. If you just send us an email with winner in the subject line, all in caps, we'll pick it out and we'll get that off to you. So thanks so much for watching. And we might have another giveaway um, before the end of the show here. So let's now look and see what's in the shop, shall we? Mm -hmm. And talk about what's new. So what do we have that's new? We've got a few things here or there. Um, We're looking over there because we've got a lot of stuff stacked yeah. up. I think the big news is Marie Wallen's mm -hmm. Cherish, though. So we have the book here. And it's gorgeous. And we did kits um, in this one, which is the Ailing. Mm -hmm. Is that how we say it? I don't know if it's Ailing or Eiling. I have no idea. I think Eiling or Ailing. I need to go back to your interview with Marie and watch. What did she emotion. say? Yeah. I don't remember what, how she said yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so we did kits in this one and three others, and we are expanding the kits mm -hmm. into some others. Um, but all of that and and the book at the time was a pre-order. And unfortunately, <laughs> We are starting to feel the the problems with shipping that are, you know, in the news. I mean, we're not starting to. It's starting to feel like it's a bit more problem. Um, and so the one box that we needed to fill all the kits, because there's one color that's in everything, is the box that didn't arrive. It went on a journey. It went on a journey. My hope is that by the time you see this, it has arrived and we have shipped out everybody's uh, lovely pre-orders. We apologize so much for the delay. We did not know that it was going to be, uh, you know, it was a huge order mm -hmm. and it all arrived on time except for this one box, which is just the way it goes, isn't it? Um, so if you just ordered the book, you should have that by now. And if you ordered the book plus a kit, we are waiting for that to come in. Um, there are 12 patterns in here, 12 designs. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just lovely um we love all of them and we mm -hmm. really enjoyed i actually want to knit this one i think 
I think that's really pretty. It's called the Ryan. Ryan? Um, there, and I like that I like one that too. One. Yeah, so this is here. It's in the shop now. You can order that. So right next door here, we have Radical Threads, which is a brand new magazine. This is issue one and it is out now and we have that in stock. Um, I think there's some lovely articles as well as nice projects in here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a brand new magazine, we definitely want to support them. Um, let's see. They do a lot of crochet as well as knitting in here. And there's some really amazing uh, recipes as well. I like this page. There's a lot of bio uh, information about the contributors, designers and dyers. Nice menu or um, recipe, I mean. Yeah, so this is really good. And uh, we, have, we have it here if you would like to order that. Radical Threads. Yeah, and then you want to grab that one. Uh, Shetland yeah. Trader was a pre-order, but that's now available. Yeah, and um, yeah, we. I don't remember if it's sold out right now, but we have more coming. Yeah, so, by the time you see this, um, we should have more. Yeah, I would think. And I know I've shown multiple times. I just love this. Mm -hmm. There's lots of really good designs yeah. in here. Um, I, I love that. I want to knit a vest. Yeah, I think vests totally rock. <sighs> This yeah. sweater. I love this sweater. So unfortunately, um, Jameson and Smith is really um, short on numbers of colors. They have most of the colors in stock, but we can't get very many of them. And we have had people ask us if we're going to be making kits, which normally we would. We would love to, but I don't think yeah. we're able to um, with the amount of yarn that we're able to get. Not yet. Really, not yet. If something changes, yeah, we'll, we'll for do sure, our best, for sure. This book has proven it, so. to be hugely popular. We're seeing it everywhere now, now that it's released, and um, it is it is a great book. Really yeah. enjoy that. And you sure. did you do have an interview um, yep, with on our Goodrin. channel with Gudrun, so if you haven't seen that yet, that's worth watching. Yeah, this is we can link to it. We will link to it below. It's good. Oh, do you want to talk about some new yarn? That we I have? do. I do. I was really excited about this. Um, toppling over a little bit. So we have Snowdonia colors in. Yay. It's hard to get all the yeah. colors in the... It's lovely. 12 colors, I believe. Yes, that sounds right. And this launched... Um, Friday. Friday, right. So by last the time you see this, last Friday. Um, and it, it, people it were really well. ready and wanting to buy it. This is... Um, so Snowdonia is Garthener Organic Sock Yarn. Uh, no nylon, 100% wool. And the way they do it is they do a blend of Romney and Hebridean yarn, and then they give it a bit of a twist, you know, a little bit of a higher twist perhaps. Yeah. But we've had all their naturals, which I think has different proportions of Romney and Hebridean in it to come up with the different colors, if I, I remember. I think so. I'd yeah. have to review. But... Yeah, because I think we've got 100% Romney even and 100%. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's all natural colors. But then they took the 75 Rom Romney 25 Hebridean base, and dyed it up in 12 different colors. It's so. really pretty. I know. So this one's Ogwen. It's a really nice teal. Yeah. So if you have some natural that you got in your socks bag too, you could always pick up a solid. Yep. And, and do color it. work or stripes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've been dreaming of stripes. I don't know why. It could be the book Stripes. Do you think? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rowan, which is a lovely... Um, green um this one is bugle which is a navy and then it looks like they took a strand of augwinet and bugle and oh, marled it and that's manai yeah that is pretty it's really beautiful this is juniper and it's sort of a sagey green very nice um and this red it's a brunette mm. it's a really nice it looks sort of orangey in this light it's yeah. really pretty this is thrift, my kind of color. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, oh, green color. Yeah. This one's buckthorn and it's a marled, it looks like they're natural with the with the red. Color. Yeah. And this is the this is the same thing, uh, but with this one and the natural, I think, called clover. Really like that. Pretty pretty. This one's spruce. This one is um the green marled with very the natural. um 
very subtle in that one. Yep. Me like this one a lot. This is stone crop. <clears throat> Lovely golden color. And then last but not least is sundew, which is much more of a rust color. Yeah. Really, really nice. Pretty. Mm. Fun together. Here we can see if we can hold them all. That's always fun. I know. Oh, pretty. Those are pretty. They are. They've got lovely. And, and if you're not a sock knitter, there's nothing that says you can't knit oh, something no. else with this. We've had plenty of customers who bought a sweater quantity of one color, too. <laughs> they smell good. Really nice. amazing. Yeah, really lovely. Love them all. So we do have, um, we, we went pretty deep with this. So we do have, at time of recording anyway, plenty in stock. I'm going to put them back. I like those. Me too. Me too. Oh, temptation. Um, we should talk about seeing your dressed in your candy canes as well. About our Christmas yarns here. Um, this is this year's one. There you go with that. This one's vintage tinsel. I really wanted to cast these on this weekend, but I'm afraid if I depart from my sweater, yeah, it'll do derail me. You can just um, soon enough knit like mad. I know when the time comes, and but I think I'll do two at a time when the time comes, Ooh. and then they'll just be done. Oh. Um, blueberry bonbon coordinates really nicely with the vintage tinsel. If you're looking to do contrast heels toes, yep. So we do have some vintage tinsel left, and I think right now we are still giving away a stitch marker. I think so. When you purchase these two. Yes, together, which is really nice. And you will have enough there if you wanted to do a couple of pairs of socks because you could also do, you know, if you just use this for um, heels and toes, then the the second pair of socks could be just this color even. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. You're able you to stretch. You can like cutesy and do like the heels and toes with the And that one, yeah. Oh. Yep. Why not? And then previous years, this is Silent Night, which is a nice, calm... Mm. color and we have some of that it's got sparkle in it um, and i know we've said it before the sparkle's not no it's, all. this is really all soft. very soft i love this one it's very light and it's really fun very colorful also with the sparkle in it yeah um this one is always very popular every year this is holly berry and this is this feels much more traditional um and it comes up as a stripe and it's really lovely Really nice. Mm -hmm. And then Maggie's candy cane, which is fun and very elfin like. Yes, and I <laughs> used for my contrast cuffs, I used milk bottle. Okay, is that what this is? No, no this is marshmallow. Like this is whiter. Yeah, that one's yeah. whiter. Milk bottle is more of like an off white, so it goes well with. Yeah, and then of course we've got the red and the green, which is super traditional. The green would be nice too. Yep, the green would be nice. Or the red. And this is, this one's called chocolate lime which feels mm -hmm. misleading because there's nothing chocolate but this is a sweetie back home or a candy um, um that's why it's called that gotcha and then this one here is cherry drop which is kind of a deeper red and then there I'm is holding them <laughs> like baby soft and then the cayenne pepper has the same red as in the candy yeah. cane although this one yeah. holly berry goes really nice with um cherry yeah. drop so there's still time to get your um, West Yorkshire Spinners holiday yarn in time for knitting socks um, for the holidays or over the holidays. Mindless knitting to keep your hands busy when you're hanging around with your family, you know, yeah. through the holidays. Very festive. So get these. Maybe we can. should do a quick and dirty like Christmas sock along. Ooh, do like, you think just so? Just a really fun. I think Let us know if idea. you'd like that. Just a quick one week not yeah fancy yeah just cast on your socks and get knitting it's good yeah. social knitting too and it, it does is. all the work for the striping and mm -hmm. all of that that's a good idea I like that. all right so let us know in the comments if you want to join us um you can use uh christmas yarns holiday yarn from years past as well mm -hmm. you don't have to buy it to knit with it but of course we have it if you would like that that's a good idea maggie it is okay what else do we have in the shop right now we have quite a few pre-orders still. There's Shetland Wool Week. Mm -hmm. That we heard was a little delayed at the printers, yeah. but um, I think we're getting near the end of that and those will be shipping to us real soon. And as soon as they come in, we will turn them around and get them right out to you. Uh, Shetland Wool Adventure Journal 3 is still on pre-order and that's got a beginning of November, I think November 8th launch date. So we should have them by then. 
Um, Stripes by Vera Valamaki is still in pre-order. Is that right? It is still in pre-order. It goes live the 29th. Okay, of October. So mm -hmm. that's coming up. And we also have her Varpu kit, which is knitted in uh, Lichen and Lace Rustic Sport, which we stock. And we're actually having quite a bit of it um, dyed up to match the pattern in her book Stripes. Yeah. So that's on pre-order as well, if that interests you. And that has, uh, that's knitted in brioche, is that right? Yeah, it has some brioche panels on it mm -hmm. and it looks really pretty. It does, it does. Pretty colors. And then brand new is uh, on pre-order. It's worsted by uh, La Bienname and Lina. So we had a lot of emails from people asking us to stock that. So yeah. we have that, that's on pre-order. And lastly, Pom Pom Quarterly, the winter issue is on pre-order right now too. Yeah. yeah. And what else do we want to mention? I think quickly we did put the, um, the cowl. The tapestry cowl? Yeah, the tapestry cowl, the two color tapestry cowl. We uh, have made it so there's a free pattern. You get the pattern free now when you purchase seven balls of Rama Finnel Garn. I'm just gonna put it on. Oh, good, yeah. Oh, I don't think I've worn it before. Isn't it nice? Oh. I'm oh. gonna wear mine all winter long. Oh, I, I need to knit one. Yeah. Isn't it nice? It is garn. really nice. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> that looks nice on you. Look, it added to the season. And we thought, <laughs> you know, we... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not too much wool ever. Um, we thought about putting kits together in lots of different two-color um, combinations. Yeah. But then we thought, why? You know, you guys can do that yourself. This one is 4078 is the light color. And the black, I think, is 410. I will double check though, and we'll put that in the show notes below. Yeah. Um, so you can knit it that color, or you could do a really traditional red and cream or navy blue and gray or cream would be really nice. And I then mean, it could go I really along. like the cowls too, because then when you put your coat on, yeah. like for those of us that live where, where we do, cold, yeah. Um, but you don't have, like I like scarves and shawls, but you got all the ends off. Yeah, and so. the shawls tend to fall undone. And I wear a lot of shawls, like I like my shawls, but yeah, I do. And then this is nice. Yeah. I keep squishing it. But. You sound surprised. <laughs> of course it's nice. <laughs> well, I mean, I knew it looked nice, but I hadn't put it on before. Is it itchy? No. No. And she's more sensitive. No. I am more sensitive. Um, I love fennel No, barn. I could easily. Yeah. So there we I go. I mean, it's wooly. Like, if you're expecting yeah. it to feel like It's not merino, merino. It's not. But I don't feel... I could easily wear this. It's not. And I, it's not, like, right on... Like, there's space There's some there, space, yeah. So it's not. But, but even if it were, on. like, even with a coat, I would be okay. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, you can make like it really see, tall if I you want to keep the weather out. Some days. I like yes. that look. <laughs> or, yeah. Or if you're trying to knit and somebody comes along. I know. You're just like, well, I think that would actually stop people and be like, oh, did you knit that? Oh, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. I meant like if my children come along. There you go. No, here. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. that's a good idea. I digress. So, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, we still have the kit for the seven color cowl. And now you can get the free pattern when you purchase the yarn. This actually only takes six balls of um, fennel garn, but, but the setup is that you buy seven and you get the kit. Uh, you get the pattern free, which is really nice. So hopefully some people would be interested in that. Yeah. yeah. I actually, I'm not sure if I've even blocked that yet. Isn't that bad? Oh, I don't know. Feel this one. Oh. I think that hasn't been blocked yet. This feels even... So well, even unblocked. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Very, very good. Okay, um, do we still have color wheels color. in the shop? Do we? Yes, we do. We just got to restock all the color wheels. I grabbed the small one. We also have a larger one that's more for creative, what's it called? A creative color wheel. Mm -hmm. um, and it has just a wider array of colors on the back. Um, this is just a great little add-on, really useful if you're yeah. looking to pick colors for yeah. your color work. Um, and you can check out, Kelsey did a yes. great little snippet on how she uses hers. Is that a freestanding um, video on our YouTube channel? Now? I believe it is a freestanding video. So we have playlists set up on our YouTube channel, right? Yes. So that um, there's one that's tips and tricks, and mm -hmm. it would just be snippets here uh, from the podcast, perhaps. Yeah. You know, with our tips and tricks. And then there's another playlist as well. We have a couple. So we have one for all of our... Um, Scottish Isle dispatches. Yeah. Um, so you can see all of Rachel's posts. 
Um, and I'm trying to remember if there's anything else on that. I think there's... Oh, um, and then one from Mega Berlin Yarns. Oh, yeah, there. that's right. Um, that one's a great one. And then I think we have a playlist of different yarns and when we're talking about different mm -hmm. yarns. So, you yeah. know, the difference between worsted and woolen spun, things like that would yeah. be in that And playlist. then even just different yarns we carry. So yeah. if you're like, I yeah. want to know more about Bichet yeah. Bouche or yeah. um, Armscott Manor, even though we yep. don't always have that, I put it up there because yeah. we do get it occasionally. Yeah. So. So we're yeah. lucky enough to get it. So check our um, YouTube channel for more than just the podcast. Uh, we're trying to fill it up with some really good information for you that, that's enjoyable. And, um, you know, yeah. yeah. And to make it easy to find, that way you don't have to go fishing through all yeah. the episodes. Um, I believe there are some, I know no one knows all. Um, I believe that there are some vanilla sweater tutorials, like adding to the Yes, that's and, right. Um, that's right. And I think we have our yeah. vanilla sweater montage in there somewhere too, where you guys sent in videos, which is just the best. I love yeah. that. All right. What else do we have um, in the shop right now? I think we wanted to mention Biche Bush because yes. um, Kristen, yeah. Kristen Scandy Works. Kristen Ma Drysdale. <laughs> Kristen Nona Drysdale, Scandy known as Scandy Works. <laughs> Um, Cassette. Yeah, she re recently released a new pattern called Maddie. We'll put it right there. Um, which we just thought was really, really lovely. Yep. And so we pulled out some Biche Bouche, the uh, pattern calls for Biche Bouche, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. And so we pulled out, what am I doing? I'm going to get this one. <laughs> um, so we pulled out the yarns and the colors <sighs> so we can see different combos. And this one's the off white, juicy and, red. Um, it's so called Norwegian Red. Norwegian Red. AKA Juicy Red. Yes. Very nice. Um, but we do, do we have this as well in yes. stock? This yes, is what we have the, lots of this in stock. Yeah, this is what the pattern calls for. Mm -hmm. So that is the original and it's so lovely. It's knitted in this color with little white flowers. But I think knitted in red would be perfect as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have trouble wearing yellow. Ah. But red I could do. Yep. I could also do blue. Yeah, it's not about me, but <laughs> are you? <laughs> but there's just lots of really good color combinations. Yeah. So if you see that yellow and cream is not your, like, right. you like it, but you can't wear it, that um, would there's be good. Lots of great combinations. This is soft blue black. Mm. Um, really and Biche Bush is um, pure lamb's wool from Scotland. It's really nice. It's really nice. I need to get knitting on this at some point. Yes. This I is agree. one. This is one that I do want to knit because it feels woolly and sticky. Mm -hmm. Like Shetland does, or like um, Fennel Garn does. Yeah. I pulled out the beige too because I thought beige might be a nice. Mm -hmm. If you didn't want to do the off white. Yep. Um, yeah. I love this. I know. Look at this. Isn't that with the. Yeah. So this is turquoise. But, you know, and then but then we just have to do this just for fun because that is gorgeous. <laughs> Love those colors. And then oh, and I think even the soft orange brown. Yeah. With the off-white. Yeah. Oh, that's really pretty. Isn't that pretty together? But that would be really nice as a as a lovely cardigan. Yeah. As the matty. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And then we have plenty of dark gray as well. Do you want to do like dark gray and off-white? Love, love gray. Yeah. Did you know that? And they have another red as well, which is a medium um, red gray. That's what they call it. Pretty. So and compare it to the other one. Compare it to the. So you can see. Yeah. One's quite a bit brighter and lighter. Yeah. But they're both really nice. This one's really almost nice. a little. Like you can see flecks of like yellow in yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know if you can. Yeah. I um, think this is all dyed in the wool, looking at how yeah. the flecks and tweediness of it is. Like this one has a lot of like. Um, depth in it in different shades. Mm -hmm. It's really. It's almost a tomato color, isn't it? It's almost. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. There's a lot of interest in it. Um, I'm just gonna keep showing great. you. Sorry. And no, that's that. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> I love these together. They're so nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we wanted to um, let you guys know that. Uh, Kristen Drysdale, Scandi Work, her, uh, her new pattern is out now it's and it's pattern. lovely yes. and I think it'd be a quick knit as yes. well. It's just a color work yoke. Her patterns are always really well, well written too. Yeah. Like, so if you're not, if you've not done a color work yoke before, this might be a good first. Yeah. Um, yep. Good first it's attempt. Two colors. It's just in the yoke. Yeah. Really pretty yarn. Yeah. Um, what else do we have coming? Oh, we um, have more... Jameson and Smith. We have more coins coming. The, we had these in a week or so ago. 
they cleared out I think that morning they went out so fast so we are getting more and we're getting a bigger order in uh, we were able to actually get quite a few um, of naturals and our best-selling colors so you can knit an awful lot from a cone um, I mentioned before but it's worth mentioning again that I knitted my hat, my uh, Hansel hat by Gudrun Johnson, which is the big one. It's a big, big, big rectangle. I knitted that using my cone, and I also knit my Star Cardi, which is behind you, but in a bigger size, in the black and gray from the cone. And I still have a little bit left, enough to you know to use. Yeah, so it's a lot of yardage. And then you can use the balls to supplement that. So. I will say we, we do get questions about this. The cone is going to feel different because mm -hmm. it still has the spinning oils on it. Right. Um, you can knit up a little swatch and throw it in the wash. Um, it will soften. The oils come out in the wash. Um, and it's just like you're too Yeah. High. You so. don't need to worry about the oils there. I mean, they will make it feel flatter, maybe even a little ropier when you're knitting with it. But um, yeah, as soon as you put that in a nice bath, you'll see it sort of cloud up. Yeah. I think just knowing to expect it. Yeah, is a good thing. Yeah, but um, it's really good. And I think weavers use uh, oiled cones all the time because it works with their loom better than, uh, you know, washed wool, I yeah. guess. Yeah. All right. So I think that's everything that we have in the store right now that we wanted to highlight. We have so much more in the store than we're talking about. Oh, you know, we didn't mention. Yeah. That this this is here already. This is here now. This is Fair Three, which is just a beautiful, beautiful Even magazine. The back is really pretty. <laughs> I know. This is out of France, and it's uh, makers of all stripes from all over the world. The photography is beautiful. The photography is beautiful. The essays are lovely, and it's just it's a good quality magazine. Um, and oh, oh, that's really pretty. She's, she's making a lampshade. I think so. Yeah. yeah, they have ceramicists. They have dressmakers. Oh. They have yeah. So if you're interested in the just creative process for different oh, makers, yeah, yeah. And I think these are pro. Oh, look at that Ooh, art. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Um, I think that... Oh my gosh, I think that's thread. I was going to say... I thought it was a... painted, but it's not. It's embroidery. It's embroidery. Oh my goodness. Amazing. 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 Beautiful. Holy wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really look gorgeous. At it. I think it's just I know. so nice. It's just beautiful to look at. Um, it is. It's a lovely coffee table type of magazine, as well as just something yeah. that just sort of... It slows my heart rate down seeing pictures yeah. like this. Just interesting to hear yeah. different people here pottery. pottery this time. Yeah. yeah, so we have that in stock right now. I think Maggie needs her own copy. Am I? Am I? <laughs> am I? <laughs> and we wanted to mention that the Rama Strickgarn might be back in soon. I'm saying might. It should be in soon. We're, we've been waiting for the gray color. It's been out of stock at yeah. the mill. We have a huge order of it coming and we think it's coming soon so we just wanted to I did mention. see a couple of people actually knitting this during the sweater cow yeah and it looks so pretty yeah it's Talk about another thing maggie wants it's i know the sweater where's the yellow <laughs> one uh white oh. one because that's yes that's what i want to knit and although i don't know garn it should go straight garn yes. is dk weight and you're doing color work in it all over color work it's going to be the, warm the cover in yeah it's going to be blue. warm and fast to knit there we go. I knew we could find it. I love here. that. That's so pretty. Yeah. They're both really nice. Yeah, they are. There's so lots of, and there's lots of men's sweaters in this booklet too. Yeah, and we do sell the booklet on its own, I believe. I believe <clears> so. As well as in kits with the yarn. But the kits with the yarn will be back yeah. in very soon. I know we've had some people ask for men's sweaters, so. Yeah. Um, all strip yarn, which is all DK, so nice, quick knitting. Although, i got to tell you, I think I would wear that too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just, yeah who yeah needs, yeah who needs waist shaping i waist. know i know sometimes you just want a cute little kid sweater yeah very for the, nice for the one day for the grandbabies Hopefully yeah no time soon no time soon yeah. <laughs> there we are. and i think the only other thing that's coming down the pike soon would be uh french panny yep our french panny cones <laughs> i gave you the purple on your wing <laughs> i did not mean to color coordinate this <laughs> you're wearing green <laughs> Look at that. That's yeah. really nice. So these are 500 gram cones. This is Guernsey yarn. So uh, made especially for knitting your fisherman 
slash Guernsey sweater. It's a five ply yarn. We do want to do, we do want to answer your questions and do um, an episode where we talk a little bit about ply and weights of yarn. So that that's coming. And, um, but this is a five ply tightly twisted uh, and there's how many grams? I mean, 500 grams, 600 yards. Yeah. One, one thing I think we can talk about safely, especially with this yarn, is the more plies you add to a yarn, the rounder it gets. For sure. And so one thing you want with a Gansey sweater where you want the textured texture. knitting to really shine and pop is they use a really round yarn, a five ply. Yeah. On top of it being a really dense, like it's just that it doesn't, it's a dense yarn. It'll show the stitch definition and it makes it waterproof for that. Exactly. It was Gansey. knitted at such a tight gauge that it would actually be pretty waterproof proof for the for the um fisherman yeah that was wearing it um there is a whole history on gansey knitting that would be a fascinating yeah. and fun uh, rabbit hole for us all to fall down yeah what's fun is that, like you can see it's got mm -hmm. like stretch in it and bounce and it's worsted it's spun really so it's very smooth yarn which yeah. which is good because then you can knit it at a very tight gauge and because it's five plies those uh knits and pearls will pop and yeah. give you the texture so and a million different colors. Well, maybe yeah. not a million, but quite a lot of colors, and we have a lot of them. Yeah. So this is coming back in, so we wanted to give you a heads up on that. And I know if you're not into Gansey knitting, there is another, I know we have at least one pattern suggestion on the website that's not a traditional Gansey. It's yeah. a gorgeous sweater that yeah. uh, uses this one. And Beth yeah. Brown Rizel has a really mm -hmm. good book. I think we're out of stock of it right now, but she has a, a book of modern Gansey knitting um, that we should try and get back in and um, and yeah. stock for you guys because uh, it's a great book. What else do we want to say? Well, we're near the end of this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it and stayed with us all to the end here. And if you have, then you're in the running for being a winner because I'm going to give away another prize, another $25 gift certificate. And this one goes to No Flies. That's the name on there. And it's, she says... The Althida that I'm working on for the sweater cowl has veg matter in it. I consider it textural and color interest. Well, you're one of us. <laughs> so, yep, just send us an email with winner in caps in the subject line and we will get your prize of a $25 gift certificate out to you right away. And thank you for watching. So definitely, if you would like to be in the running, leave us a comment and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Maggie, do we have anything else before we go? We have Caitlin here with us today. Well, not here with us, but um, but she was actually for this segment. Um, and she was actually at Rhinebeck this past weekend Yay. at New York Sheep and Wool. She went with her mother. Yeah. Um, I think they had a great time. It sounded like they had a great time. Um, I was completely jealous. Of the oh, time I had such bad having. FOMO all weekend. I was perfectly comfortable not going this year until I started getting photos Same. and seeing everybody's. I'm sure I'm not alone in this. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad that people were able to go, and it looks like it was a wonderful event. Yeah, um, but I was sad not to be there. Just a little bit. Yeah, but Caitlin but. went as our roving reporter, and we have some video from her now, which we hope you enjoy. And then after that, stay tuned for um, FOs from the Cal and see your FO if you were knitting with us up there. And I think all that's left to say at this point is, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Bye. Hello everyone, nice to be back with you again today. I have a few things to share with you today, so let's just jump right in. First, I wanna show you my finished vanilla sweater, which I just finished for the knit along we've been doing. Then I wanna start talking about gift knitting. Um, the sweater that I'm wearing today is called the Stillwater Cardigan. It is by Marie Green, it has this pretty cable, just kind of meant to be an open cardigan. I knit this before my days at the Woolly Thistle, so it's not our yarn, but it is uh, a worsted weight. I think this could be nice and piece fleece. Um, might be a little heavy for it, but um, yeah, keeping me cozy here as the weather starts to turn. So I'll show you that vanilla sweater. I talked about this last time on the Shopcast in more detail. This is Kareen's design. And many of you have knit this. We have kits in the shop, knit in Rama Finnelgarn top-down raglan. It does not call for the color um, contrast and the stripes, but I added those in for fun. Mine is in color 4136, which is a heathery gray. Um, it's a minty green with heathered gray. 
and this is 4121, kind of a coppery color. I love how it turned out and I've just loved following along with the knit along and all of the beautiful projects that you've all finished up recently. So yeah, thanks to everyone who participated in that. And next I want to talk about some gift knitting ideas. Uh, many of us like to knit handmade gifts for loved ones for the holidays. And um, I just have a couple of kind of favorite go-to um, gift projects to talk about. And I'm sure many of you do too. Um, many of you probably have patterns memorized and things that you've knit many times. Um, I'm getting there with a couple of these. So I wanted to show you a few things and just talk a little bit about um, kind of making some of the decisions about who you're, who you're knitting for and um, some of the things to consider. So um, yeah, many of the people that we knit for are not necessarily knitters themselves. Although I find it is fun to make things for other knitters because there's that extra level of appreciation from them. Uh, I've knitted a sweater for my mom, uh, <laughs> which is always special to do. We do a little exchange sometimes. She knits for me, I knit for her. Um, but when you're knitting for people who don't necessarily know much about knitting or woolly wools especially, then you um, might have some um, considerations to make as to the care of the garment. Uh, you don't want to make something for someone who doesn't know how to care for woolly wool, which is mostly what we carry in the shop here. Uh, so I was thinking a little bit about that. Uh, Maggie at the shop, she had a great idea of sending along a bottle of eucalyn. We sell the little small bottles of eucalyn wool wash um, as kind of a a hint towards how to care for the garment that you're giving them or the, the hand knit item. Um, also, I've been thinking about some of the yarns in our shop that are washable, like the West Yorkshire Spinners sock yarn, or Peace Fleece even says you can put it in the wash, so some of those yarns you might consider over others that take more delicate care. So I uh, wanted to show you a couple of items that I've made in the past that I think would make nice gifts. These are called the lambing mitts. They are by Veronica Job, and these are knit in peace fleece. This is the color Anna's Grasshopper, which is a beautiful light green with lots of flecks of other colors in it. And these are great for lots of different people because they don't really have a size. <laughs> and then they fold down to kind of cover up the fingers. So these could be wearable by a lot of different people. And again, those are in Peace Fleece, which says it's, um, on the label, says it's washable. Uh, I might still include a note to um, not wash them on hot and high agitation. But So that's, um, again, knit in Peace Fleece, Anna's Grasshopper. And I even had enough left from that one skein to make this hat. I knit this for my son a few years ago. I think he wore it when he was one. I'd have to look back at which size I knit, but this is called the Garter Ear Flap Hat. It is a free pattern by Pearl Soho and has um, just a little bit of short row shaping here to make kind of the, um, the brim go down over the ears. Love the little tufting here. That's again in Peace Fleece. Um, so kind of a fun, fun baby knit idea there. Uh, I've also knit a bunch of the Temple of Knit simple house slippers. My mom recognizes this pattern from years ago, something similar um, that, that they used to make. It's basically, we'll put a picture here, but it's a garter stitch rectangle that kind of ends up being the heel. And then you join in the round to knit stockinette towards the toe and you end up doing just a few decreases at the toe. Then you sew up one of the sides of the rectangle along the back to be the back of the heel. It's a little tricky to explain, but it comes together really easily. It's super fun um, to knit. Uh, it's very simple, but then allows you to play with the colors that you choose. I love choosing a yarn that fits the personality of the person I'm gifting the, the um, slippers for. 
I find they're super stretchy, so you don't even really have to know their shoe size. You can estimate really roughly. Uh, I was thinking of West Yorkshire spinners for that. I knit one pair in a sock yarn that I held double. It was a self-striping sort of, um, and then held, you know, held double. It kind of made sort of a um, more subtle stripe, which was a lot of fun. I also wanted to show a few things from some of my favorite books. One is Strange Brew. Uh, you'll probably hear us talk about this one again. This is one of our favorite books uh, by Tin Can Knits, and they have beautiful sweaters in here, but also some nice accessories. Um, so like this mountain mist hat would be fun. Their sizes uh, range from newborn all the way up to as large as you could get. So these uh, even would just provide nice numbers for a hat, even if you're not going to follow the color work pattern exactly. Another beautiful hat in here. There's also a cowl. Um, but yeah, this book just has tons of um, just ideas for sizing to kind of jump off from. So there's that. I also just recently was looking through this book, Nordic Nix with Birger Berg, and there's some gorgeous accessories in here um, for those kind of quicker, but um, still really special items. So here's a beautiful pair of slipper socks. I'm thinking of making these for someone this fall, this season. Um, a lot of this is knit in Roma Finnegarn, I believe, or a fingering weight. Look at these beautiful mittens. I like to do accessories as gifts because um, they go a little bit quicker and are not as tough to fit as something like a sweater. So just nice to have a few other things in mind as you ponder who you're going to be knitting for this season. This doesn't even have to fit. It's just a little can cozy or to go over a vase. Really pretty stuff in here and the photography is just gorgeous. So you can check this book out if you haven't yet. So um, I hope you enjoyed just a couple of ideas on um, things you could start shopping for to knit for the holidays. Uh, as always, just feel free to reach out if you have any questions for us in the shop as you're browsing. And uh, thanks so much again for tuning in. I was also lucky enough to have spent this past weekend not at home. I am in the Hudson Valley area and uh, was able to attend the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And I put together a little montage of some of the sites that we saw at the festival. So um, we're going to put that in here and I hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time. Thanks. The New York Sheep and Wool Festival 2021 kicked off with a fiber animals parade. This is also called Rhinebeck because it takes place in Rhinebeck, New York. It is primarily a sheep and wool showing festival, but has also evolved into a beautiful show for knitters and yarn producers, um, wool enthusiasts in general. In the books barn, we got to see Gudrun Johnston and all of her beautiful samples from the Shetland Trader Volume 3, which has just released recently. We have that in the shop. And we got to see the beautiful samples from the book. We got to meet Gudrun. Uh, Mary Jane Mucklestone was also there with some samples from her Fair Isle oh, Weekend so book. Gorgeous. We saw some beautiful pom-pom uh, samples and met a couple of the team from there. Just always lovely to have a chance to talk to some of the people behind the books that we love. Here you can see the actual book, a few more samples, and some of the pom-pom uh, products as well. This is Wing and a Prayer Farms booth a farm owned by Tammy, and 
She has lots of fiber animals. She uh, naturally dyes her own yarn. I think this is one of her sheep's fiber there. Here at the foster uh, sheep farm, this lady is demonstrating how to spin on a drop spindle. The festival is always a really lovely place to um, get to people watch, especially all the knitters wearing their beautiful finished sweaters. It takes place in the fall. Um, usually have really beautiful weather with the leaves. Here is Flying Fibers. They specialize in some British breed yarns. They have lovely samples knit up too. We spent a lot of time over in the sheep barns. <laughs> this is a less uh, Lincoln long wool sheep with just gorgeous curls and texture. Just couldn't help but reach out and feel some of that. Here are some Shetland rams. Getting a little side eye from that guy. These are Gotland sheep, which is originally a Swedish breed. Our Olcentrum yarn is, in it, is um, spun with Gotland. Really nice, nice feel and texture there on that longer wool too. Here's a Romney sheep, one of the friendliest little fuzzy faces. <laughs> These are Columbia sheep, one of the very largest breeds. And this is in the barn where some judging is going on. There's a bunch of different breeds here that are all being judged on how they conform to their own breed's um, specifics. Always interesting to see the farmers presenting their animals. These are our friends at Green Mountain Spinnery with their beautiful yarn. Some more lovely samples and some of their team working there. Here is some Icelandic fiber from Frelzy Farms. I picked up some beautiful Icelandic sheep's horn buttons at this booth. Some lovely knitting there. The festival is just full of all kinds of vendors, whether it's yarn or here you can see some baskets, fiber products, um, knitting notions, just everything you can think of related to the fiber arts. Here's some Jacob sheep, very old breed. Some beautiful multicolored fleeces. These sheep are known for their impressive horns as well. Here's a woman spinning teaswater locks. She's doing kind of an art yarn here with lots of texture, demonstrating how that's done right next to her own animals in the barn. This is a thin sheep fleece, and the farmer is demonstrating what that looks like spun up into one of their yarns. Uh, Rama Finnegarn is made with Finnish wool, and so I'm imagining the sheep that gave wool for that yarn might have looked like these guys. They are quite tired out by the end of the weekend here, but known for um, having multiple births and so they're often crossed with another type of breed. This is a valley black nose sheep. It's just such a sweet face and beautiful fiber. Here's another example of some Shetland sheep and some beautiful shawls from Shetland wool. And an Angora goat. <laughs> Always full of uh, character there. <laughs> The festival grounds were beautiful, filled with lots of friendly people, all lots of fiber enthusiasts, and it was a wonderful weekend.